explain. Oh no, the camera's running. Don't want people to know I'm using makeup. This is a Chord Cutis DAC and this is an AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt DAC. Now both of these products could be DAC of the year because they are some of the most revered DAC products at the moment. The Chord Cutis is a hi-fi DAC. You plug in your digital sources into it and from there you plug your analog outputs to your integrated amp or pre-amplifier. In this case, I'm using a preamp. On the other hand, the AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt plugs between your laptop and headphones or phone and headphones, and it's both a DAC and a headphone amp. The cord costs £1,200 or about $1,500. The AudioQuest Dragonfly costs £270 or about $300. This audio quest is made by an American company and the Chord Cutist is made by a British company. Also, the Chord is tremendous and jaw droppingly good for the money. Similarly, the audio quest Dragonfly Cobalt is jaw dropping, jaw dropping rather and tremendous for the money. The Audio Quest stands up very good at its price and the Chord stands up very good at its price. The Chord is not comparable to the Audio Quest and the Audio Quest is not comparable to the Chord because of their differences. And the reason why that's so is because they're different types of DACs for different uses. The Chord is a hi-fi DAC used rack based the audio quest dragonfly is a mobile type dac principally it uses an ess saber dac and the cord is fpga based so you could say the cord is equally as good as the audio quest factoring in price disparity and equally the audio quest is equally as good as the cord factoring in price disparity so by designating one a product of the year, by implication, we make the other inferior. And how can we do this when these products are both so great in their own right? So if I had to say which is my DAC product of the year between these two, I'd have to say none of them because it's nigh on impossible to pick a winner and they're both very accomplished unto themselves. So how do we rate the Musical Fidelity MX DAC? It's under half the price of the Cutest. And on this basis, is it comparable? It's similar to the Cutest in the sense that it's a hi-fi based DAC, but you can also use it for headphones in a headphone rig type system. It's a small form factor or footprint DAC. It's not gonna occupy much space with its half width case. Input and output wise, it's got everything you need. It has two Toslink digital inputs, two coaxial RCA digital inputs, a USB 2, and on the front, it uses lights to signify the incoming sample rate. It's a bit like the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic Plus. It's only a 24192 DAC, which could be a criticism, but to be fair, it's not really a criticism because how many people own music that has sample rates higher than 24192 music anyway? Most of the music that we have is still from our CD libraries. Another thing to say is that it does DSD up to DSD 128, but it's not an MQA capable DAC. The thing is with this DAC is that it's almost the quality of the cutest in percentage non-audio file type terms. In other words, it's actually about 90% of the performance of the cutest DAC. So which areas does it actually major in? Well, it doesn't have airy treble like some DACs I've tried. The MyTech Brooklyn springs to mind, 
but it's also a very neutral sounding DAC. It has sparkly treble as well, which is pleasing because that brings out a lot in the recording. But it's not going to be either too bright or too warm in your system. It sits right bang in the middle. So overall, it's got very, very good balance. When I first tried it out, I did find myself hearing some edgy, sibilant treble in the higher frequencies, particularly when you uh, hear an intake of breath of a vocalist, which tends to be where you hear it. And I found myself noticing that. But after a while, I reckoned that it was only really recording dependent. And you tend to get that those effects in recordings that are hiked up in the higher frequencies. So you hear it and notice it more. And playing better recordings, I didn't find any problems in this respect. Another thing of note is that the bass is quite thick and fast and it's a dynamic sounding DAC. So it's not going to be any slouch for electronic music or dealing with fast, speedy recordings. The Cutest has a more enveloping sound with soundstage and it has thicker bass and these are noticeably improved areas. But obviously this is £700 more than the Musical Fidelity MX DAC. But this isn't really the point here. The point is, is that DACs like this Musical Fidelity make the point about diminishing returns in hi-fi. In other words, as you spend more and more, your pound or dollar gets you less and less improvement. So it doesn't mean that a more expensive setup tends to improve on a cheaper one, but it's all about value. And if you want every dollar or every pound to count over DACs like the price of the cutest, then this is what the Musical Fidelity MX DAC does very, very well. You might also go away and you could add streaming to your system, maybe something like a Blue Sound Node 2 or the Alu Digi1 Signature streamer that I looked at. It makes the point that DACs like this are 90% on the value of something that's much more expensive. And sometimes spending that extra amount of money is hard to stomach sometimes, particularly because of the smaller improvement that you're getting as you're paying more. And this is the overall impression you get with the MX DAC, how relatively competitive it is. So as we've said, it's not possible to draw a DAC product of the year between the Audio Quest and the Chord because of the differences we mentioned. But what of the Chord and this musical fidelity, even though they have different performance and price levels? Is it possible to make a case of putting the MX DAC into DAC product of the year 2019 with products of different price and performance level? Also based upon affordability, it being 90% of the performance of the cutest and it being good in most areas, notably neutrality. Also based upon affordability to most buyers and it being good and neutral like the cutest. The answer to that is much more so for a product of value. And that's the point really, isn't it? That a product that does stuff 
at better value surely has a bigger place in DAC product of the year. It just has to be because value is such a big consideration in the purchase of hi-fi. But then having said all of that, trying to put a product into a category of DAC product of the year is nigh on impossible. So sorry to disappoint you and leave you on a cliff edge after watching a video about a DAC product of the year. And the reason why that's the case is you're trying to compare products with deep different feature sets for different usages, for different tastes, for different requirements, with different specifications. It becomes impossible. An example would be if you've got a streamer, say, of the year that has a particular sonic signature, but it doesn't suit the person that wants to buy it, the sonic signature that they want, then it's not their DAC product of the year. And that's not to take anything away from the Qtist or the Musical Fidelity MX DAC. They all come very recommended. And in the case of the MX DAC, it's a good budget type DAC that's neutral. It suits lots of systems and it will tie into lots of tastes and it does everything well. It doesn't do anything badly. If you want to push me though, I can say what is the most accomplished DAC of the year, but that will probably come as no surprise because it also is the most expensive, and that's the DCS Bartok. This stack has just a level of insight and detail into the music, which is extremely balanced and realistic. And that's why it stands out. It's also the case that a DAC like that is just designed for pure musical enjoyment with no compromises. And obviously that's why it costs a lot. Anyway, thanks for watching this short film and if you like my perspective on things, please hit the subscribe button or like button. It encourages me to do more and allows me to get more revered and quality products from manufacturers that people want me to look at.